Welcome everyone to this release party. My name is Tomasz and I'm working at Virtus Lab as a contributor for Scala Center. In this short talk, I would like to explain my look at Scala 3, which is a bit skewed because that is a look at the world of tooling. I spent last year working supporting developers that want to work with Scala 3. And today I will go through the existing tools, tell a bit more about their current status and what ideas we have for the future and for Scala 3. Scala 3 is just around the corner. A lot of you might have had time to take a look at some of the features, experimented with them, you might have used some of the tools that were made available for you, you might have been disappointed by some missing feature or something not yet fully worked. I'm here to tell you that we are working hard on the Scala 3 tooling and we are getting uh, closer to a complete feature parity with Scala 2 when it comes to some of the most important tools. However, that will not be enough for us. Last year has seen a huge number of new contributions to tooling, a lot of great new ideas. We want to keep that impetus, implement new ideas and improve every use tool, which will both translate to Scala 2 and Scala 3. Main work around tooling that we did was focused on the Scala Meta Parser which is used by a number of tools in the Scala 2 world, including Scala uh, Format, Scala Fix, Metals, MDoc, and more. Main objective was to adjust this parser to understand Scala 3 syntax. The parser offers those tools an easy way to describe the code, which can be used in a number of ways, starting with uh, just better visualization, such as for document outline in Metals, and ending up at manipulating the source code, which is done, for example, in MDoc for worksheets, which are later used in Metals. This allowed us to get out of the box support for all the older features uh, that already existed in the Scala 2. What remained was making it work for all the new concepts that come with Scala 3. Especially hard it was to make all work with the new optional braces. While the code might sometimes look nicer without them, it is quite hard to make it, make it all work together with some legacy syntax decisions. But I am happy to report that we are able to currently parse the entire .e code base, which is one of the more complex that currently exists. One of the most anticipated tools to have for Scala 3 is Scala Format, which is an automatic formatter for Scala 3 widely used by the community. You can see an example on the slide. Making it available for Scala 3 was meant to be essential for many teams to be able to migrate to the new language version. I'm happy to say that this month uh, this has finally been done and you can test it out on your code base already. The only thing that you need to do is to change the Scala format version to the newest one and set the dialect to Scala 3. You can also change the indentation from the default tool, which might be especially needed in case of optional braces. You might also use the Scala format configuration uh, with the file override option to define which files should be formatted as Scala 3 and which ones as Scala 2, so that all the formatting that uh, is not influenced by the new dialect. This might be especially important in case of optional braces in order to avoid uh, unexpected indented regions being picked up, which might change the formatting of the existing code. Scala format is also capable of rewriting parts of the code, and we plan to add a couple of uh, simpler routes, such as dropping uh, braces whenever they can be replaced by indentation syntax, or a rewrite rule to change or deprecated uh, syntax to a new one. So like, for example, here, import as, uh, renames with uh, the keyword as. Another amazing tool used by the community is mdoc, which might be used for adding type check markdown documentation for Scala. This means that all of your Scala snippets can be compiled and even evaluated, which makes sure that every snippet in your documentation is correct. Everyone that heavily documents their libraries already knows why this is important. People can easily copy and paste these snippets into their code, and you can even extend mdoc capabilities with some new functionalities. 
Such a documentation tool can really enable developers to uh, quickly get started with any new topic they pick up. Aside from compiling and evaluating, MDoc can also be used in some really advanced ways, such as making sure that code throws an exception. A crash modifier written after the triple backtick will make sure that it is the case, just like on the slide. One of the more advanced use cases you can find is the Scala format documentation, which allows you to demo configuration changes on the docs page itself. At the time of the recording this doc, the work around making all available for Scala 3 is finishing with just a small number of tests still failing. Soon you will be able to use the exact same capabilities for your Scala 3 code. Additionally, MDoc is used to implement worksheets, as I mentioned before, and that already works for Scala 3, which you can check out in the current version of Metals. I highly recommend it as a place to experiment with some new Scala 3 features. You can even share your ideas easily with other users. We are also planning to embed some of the functionalities of MDoc into the new Scala doc. This effort is being currently worked on and heavily reuses the already existing uh, MDoc implementation. However, most likely for any more advanced usage or for cross compilation sake, you will need to use MDoc. But I think it will still be pretty amazing to have the, for example, standard library documented with type checked code snippets because you can embed those code snippets into doc strings itself, not only microsites. And it might be even possible that MDoc will reuse some of the other compiler features in the future and any improvements in the compiler will then be able to be reused in MDoc itself. Scalafix is another great Scala tool which can be used for refactoring and linting your code. It has proven necessary in a lot of code bases to ensure the proper quality of the code. It adds such capabilities as adding third type to definitions, removing unused imports, uh, such as in this example, or even can be used to migrate a code base to newer versions of a library. That can often be done automatically, albeit not that common yet, via Scala Steward itself, for example. One of the more interesting uses of Scalafix are the rules that can migrate your code base to adhere to the Scala Free syntax, uh, to change anything that is no longer valid. It's important to mention though that most of uh, the Scala 2.13 code should work without issuing Scala Free. These rules are used by Scala Free Migrate tool itself, which is uh, amazing and can be used when switching your project to Scala Free. I highly recommend to try it out. It will help with the library dependencies, migrating Scala C options, and changing the uh, syntax itself. For Scala Fix itself, we also plan to add rules to remove deprecated syntax that will no longer be necessary um, for, for, for free one. Unfortunately, Scala Fix does not yet support Scala free, but most important components are in place and will work on this this year. It might even be possible that uh, more basic rules aside from explicit result types will soon be available to use on your Scala free code base. Finally, let's talk about Metals. Metals is an LSP server that allows you to use your favorite editor, such as Vim, Visual Studio Code, Emacs, or Sublime via the LSP protocol. We now support both Scala 2 and Scala 3, which allows people to switch between them even inside a single project. Hopefully this should ease the migration effort. We've already managed to add support for most of the existing features that are available in Scala 2, aside from a few, the main one being auto imports, so automatically importing anything that is not currently available in your scope. And that is uh, blocking a bunch of things that depend on it, but we're working to make it available as soon as possible. Uh, other missing features uh, are, for example, go to implementation and type decoration, which uh, requires some more work on the .dotty semantic DB support. We will spend this year polishing the Scala free support and try to work on some new exciting things that Scala free brings to the table. I will go over some of the game-changing features I'm keen on working on. Inline, which is now a um, Scala free modifier. It's much more fleshed out in this new version and brings in a lot of new capabilities, such as uh, well uh, as well as some new challenges. 
For example, you can have recursive inline methods, which looks uh, like something that might be really useful for functional programming. However, the challenge is that we would want to make sure that users are able to see the results of inline, as well as make sure all the tools, such as uh, the debugger, work out of the box. Another interesting capability that the compiler already provides are suggestions about imports um, th that can provide users with the needed implicit or given extension methods in this case. This can already be seen in the compiler messages and we should be able to extract it from the presentation uh, compiler itself. This would mean that we can uh, have quick fixes for any kind of implicit issue you might encounter. It gets even better. Scala Free Compiler no longer produces bytecode directly, but is able to generate intermediate files called Tasty, which both provide a basis for making almost all future code compatible, as well as gives us some additional information that we can use to implement new features. The main game changer here is uh, those tasty files uh, will be included uh, in the JAS, which is not possible, for example, for semantic DB files. Another thing that Scala 3 does right, in my opinion, is the new macro system, which looks extremely well. There are um, basically normal Scala code and look much easier to manage than the Scala 2 ones. I am not yet sure how metas can help in case of working with macros, but for sure we will, not, we will need to make sure everything runs smoothly and optimally when using macros. Uh, as far as for the features, I imagine it would be useful to see what kind of code gets uh, generated, maybe um, see how AST looks like, anything that can help out with uh, debugging macro issues. One of the cool things demoted by EPFL's Guillaume uh, Martres on the last real life Scala fair were user-defined refactoring, where users could, would be able to teach ID refactoring using this new macro API. I am not completely sure if any feature based on that idea will be implemented anytime soon, but this brings in a lot of new ideas around how IDEs can help out uh, the users. For those of you using Scala.js, you might be happy to hear that it's working with Scala 3. Uh, it reuses most of the existing code, such as the linker, uh, thanks to which it was only implemented in three months. There might be some uh, bugs show up when code bases migrate to Scala 3, but as for, uh, for today, there are no larger outstanding issues. The work on making Scala native, an equal partner to both JS and JVM platforms, has been recently ramping up. There was a recently released 0.4.0 version, which added support for the newest Scala version 2.12 and 2.13, which is a huge step forward. Unfortunately, it's not yet available for Scala 3, but do not despair, it's in the plans. There's still some work left to do to enable Scala uh, native on Windows. There's also uh, proper uh, multi-threading um, work to be done. Mm -hmm. However, the next step after those will be implementing native for Scala 3. The challenge should not be impossible since there are all, was a lot of work already done for Scala.js and native reuse some of the same infrastructure. We should also be able to reuse a lot of the existing code, most prominently the linker and the optimizer. If you have any questions about it, please do send them my way. I can try to get some answers for you from the Scala native team. In the end, I wanted to assure you all, do not be afraid. We've got you covered. We will strive to improve all possible tooling and try to add as many new and interesting features as possible. Do not hesitate to reach out. We're happy to hear ideas or problems uh, you might be facing. I cannot promise we'll take care of them right away, but we'll try to do our best to make the tooling seamless and a pleasure to use. Now a question to Martin. What new tooling feature would you love to see implemented when it comes to Scala 3, but that did not exist in Scala 2? So basically what will those new exciting features need in terms of tooling. So I'm especially interested in that because that will give me some idea on uh, what to work on, uh, on what to improve and make better for the existing tooling ecosystem. Thank you for listening to my talk. Um, 
I hope we'll hear something interesting during the Q&A. And as always, uh, report any issues you encounter in any of the tooling I explained. I'll try to uh, help out, uh, maybe not all the tools, but most of them. And yeah, it was very nice to be able to speak to you. And I hope you'll be able to use Scalafree soon and have loads of fun with it. Thank you very much.